Hello, everybody. I am coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. Why am I here in Boston? I'll reveal in just a moment. But first, welcome to the Power Hour. I had asked you, uh, those of you who may not have been at a Power Hour recently, because I see some, some names I haven't seen here in a while, my boot campers, thank you. Grateful for your time. Are you here because of the new time? I've been trying to switch around the time. So this one is noon Eastern. Uh, do you like middle day? You like early? You like late? Tell me, because I, of course, I want to satisfy as many of boot campers as possible. And if you have any questions, comments, situations, challenges, successes, failures, I want you to share them because I believe, I believe in the power of this hour that we can learn from each other and be inspired. And we've already had, I already have uh, a list of questions sent in. We've got from Karen, we've got from LaDonna, and we've got Nancy. So I'm gonna you know, kick off with those and pepper them in. So I wanna make sure I get to all of you, each of you, if you have a question, an issue, something you wanna share, very excited. So I, again, today is, a, this is a very special time for me in my life personally. Why? Because, would you, would you look at that? That, ladies and gentlemen, is my granddaughter. She was born at 1.10 a.m. on Sunday. She is precious. She is beautiful. And that's why I'm in Boston. I came early. My daughter had the had the foresight to say, Dad, maybe she come a little early because she she came a little early. And that's Jane Gabrielle, her first daughter with her husband Xavier and my first uh, my first grandchild. She's absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. And uh, uh, you know, words can't describe friends. Uh, words cannot describe the joy. I mean, I could just take this whole hour and just look at that beautiful face. And right after we finish here, guess where I'm going? I'm gonna go hold her and see her and talk to her. I'm hoping she's gonna say Papa Stu. You know, it's it's like day three. What the heck? Hi, Papa Stu. But apparently I'm told it's not gonna happen just yet. Um, but I promise I do have training today. I won't get I won't get too uh, too distracted. Uh, thank you, Linda, on your congratulations. Uh, and Linda says she likes this time. Hi, Julia. This is a much better time for you, Julia. Great. Hey, Michael, 11 or 12 are best for me. So, Michael, I assume you meant East Coast. 11 or 12 is good. Patricia. Hey, Patricia, this is a good time. Gloria says, beautiful. Congratulations. Your life has changed forever. Indeed, it has. It has. It's amazing. I really, I feel different, too. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. Thank you, Linda. She is adorable. She's absolutely beautiful. Hey, Nancy, I can feel your joy through the through the web. That's cool. Good. Let it come through. You know, it's all about sharing joy and, and happiness and, and being a beacon. So thank you. Hey, Sherry. Um, thank you so much for, for that. Trinita's in the house. Hi, Trinita. Trinita, you're coming. And you, Danny, you're coming on uh, our, our mastermind. So excited. Karen, you too. Um, Mazel tov. Thank you, Trinita. I appreciate your words. And Michael said, East Coast time. Yeah. Cool beans. All right. So, I, you know, hey, listen, there we go. Grandfather's bragging rights. There's my beautiful granddaughter. And, and I can't wait to go spend time with her. So a quick recap. I know uh, you had uh, you guys know Teddy Burris because he's been a guest with me here at Power Hour. He was uh, my guest a couple of weeks ago. He's doing his own mastermind. Partly. I mean, he's done masterminds before. Uh, but he, he did it again. He accelerated this new one because there had been so much interest in the travel community. So many travel professionals like me don't use LinkedIn. I just have a page and it's a waste. It's a waste, waste, waste because I don't use it. I don't leverage it. I don't communicate right. Although the good news is Teddy is already rubbing off on me because I published, you know, I write for TRO, travel, uh, travel Research Online. And so I every time I write an article, I'm going to publish it there. So I'm going to I'm do a LinkedIn turnaround. So it's going to drive me new followers. And I'm going to follow new people. I'm going to influence new people and get new business. So uh, if you hadn't joined his mastermind, uh, you still have time. And uh, you may have seen that I layered in a bonus coaching hour from me. So if you take uh, Teddy's LinkedIn mastermind, I will meet up with you one-on-one -on -one after. And think about this too, that you can offer to you clients too. How can you add value if you're doing a joint venture? What can you do in a joint venture? Maybe you're doing it with another expert or a pro um, and they're the group leader. What can you layer in, layer on? And 
I'm going to give myself, give an hour to talk about the LinkedIn Travel Agency Connection after you take Teddy's uh, course, because that, that's when you're going to learn from him, from the master, and then I'll see if I can help you connect the dots or review anything you want me to review. So I just want to want to let you know about that. You you probably heard about the Mastermind Retreat. We're, we're sold out, waitlist only, just in case there's a cancellation. Mike and I are very, very, very excited about that. And mark this down, May, save the date, May. I don't really know what dates, the truth is, but I think I'm going to do the next summit, Group Sales Success Summit 3 in May. And I have some really great ideas. And of course, you, my boot campers, I come to you for uh, even more a great ideas so that I bring on uh, some people you loved from Group Sales Success Summit 1 and 2, who you'd like to hear from again, and who knew you want to hear from in 3. I appreciate that. So today's training, I just want to, as you guys and gals know that I like starting off with uh, with, with some training first, in addition to our open agenda, which is your agenda, what I'm showing you here are handouts. And I just pack, pick these randomly. See, whenever I get hired to do a speaking gig, and pay attention because maybe this will inspire a new practice for you. Whenever I get hired to do a workshop, not necessarily a keynote, because if, it, if it's a keynote, it could be a huge auditorium and, and nobody's really taking notes like that, although I still try to do handouts. But, but I would do that virtually. Go to my website, download it. But when I'm doing a workshop, and if you've been in any of my workshops, friends, Trinita, I know you certainly have, when I do uh, the Dream Vacations event, group event, I give a handout. Now, if you notice these two handouts, I don't know if you can see them, but if you notice the two, these two handouts, there are blanks. So it's a fill-in-the-blank handout. Now, friends, imagine that you, it's time, this is, we're talking pitch perfect now. Pitch perfect in boot camp, that's where I try to help you deliver, construct the best presentation possible and deliver the best, best presentation possible to get the group. So this is not group launch secrets. This is not selling it to the people to get them to sign up. This is to, this is to sell, this is for you to get hired by the organization, the group leader, so they hire you to do the group. Right. So this is this is that first step before you go anyplace else. So one of the things you all find, I'm sure, is that they they just want you just put it in, a, in an email. Just send me your presentation. Send me the price quote. That's all we need. That's all we want. And, you know, and I know that's not all they need. That's all they want, because it, it, because if that's all you send them, what's going to happen? They're just going to look at the last page. Right. With the price point. And they're not going to go back to see the beautiful, magnificent, more inclusive package that you've built for them, which is what makes you more successful, which is what's going to help you win more business because you create a package, not just the off the shelf, bare bone, stripped down product. So could you imagine instead of just saying, you know what, um, when I come into your office, I'm going to present, I'll give handouts or um, if you're going to do an online presentation, you'll distribute the handouts then. Instead of sort of saying no, well, why don't you do what I do? You, you can actually send them a handout in advance to fill in the blank. So it, it, it actually will help you do a several things. Number one, it will help you um, in setting an agenda for your presentation, right? Because remember, uh, one of the most important things is that you take control. You show them you are worthy of being hired. You take control so they feel comfortable saying, you got my business. You got it. So imagine, imagine as you're setting up the agenda, the stuff you, you, know, you, you want to present, you want to take them through, immerse them through day by day and, and, and show them how much value you personally are bringing. OK, and you remember, you're going to talk about more benefits than features. But imagine saying, I have for you. A handout, please print this out so that when I present, or it, obviously if you're doing it live, you're going to give out handouts to everybody. But what you're doing, friends, is there's no price point. It's fill in the blank. They don't know the answers. So you, you're going to engage them in the presentation process, just like I do as a professional speaker doing training. You see a fill in the blank. You want to fill in the blank. Now, some people are fill in the blank people, right? Some of, some of you are not. Some of you would rather just focus and, and take notes after. But what I'm saying is this will allow you to set up an agenda so you can actually visualize it and see it, right? 
And it's when you send it to them, you're going to say, hey, listen, here's a, a great handout. It's going to help because it's, I'm going to walk you through step by step of, of this wonderful group we're putting together together. And uh, take a look through here, even though it's fill in the blank. I'll do that when we meet. But is there anything here you don't see that you want to make sure I cover? Let me say it again. It's an opportunity to you for you, friends, to say, take a look at this is this is the agenda, and I'm going to run through this so you can fill in all the blanks for you. But is there anything here you don't see that you want to see that you want to make sure I cover? All right, and that will help you go back and make a change to it if you need to, because you, you obviously you you're going to make sure you give them the information to fill in the blanks. And now I just changed the slide here. This is an example of when I've filled in the blank. So I also, and I don't give it out there because then it's cheating. I tell everybody, now listen to what I do. I treat you, you know that some of you see me present live, know I do this. I say, friends, if you are not a fill in the blank person and you'd rather just pay attention to me while I talk to you, well, just go to this website, go to my website, and I've uploaded the, the, w w this document or the PDF with all the blanks filled in, right? So you're going to create two documents, one with the fill in the blank, one with the blanks filled in. And, you're gonna, and what you're doing, too, is you're driving them to your website. You're going to give them the URL. Now, I create a simple URL. So if it's Dream Vacations, it'll it'll say the name of the Travel Leaders Network or if it's Nest, whatever it may be. So it's very simple for them. It's a hidden page. Nobody else knows about it except the people who's in my audience. And also I say, and if if you didn't get a chance to fill in all the blanks, and if you want to make sure you got it right, go to my webpage I created just for you. And what does that do, friends? It creates more engagement. They come to your web. It's an excuse to get them to your website, and you could uh, pepper in more information. You could show more pictures. You can provide bonus documents. So that's the final note I want to say in that is that if you can drive them to your website, there you can say, listen, not only will you get the blanks filled in, but I put some bonus documents there, some great downloads for you, and some pictures, maybe some more pictures. You see what I'm saying? I really think that that. This is something that, that I do regularly that adds value. You can do too when you're doing your presentation. And I'm going to stop. Let me see if there's any comments or, or feedback on that note. And, and you know, maybe but one of you will, will be able to adapt this and utilize it. Uh, Ruth's in the house. Congrats. Grants are, grants are a gift. Thank you, Ruth. I appreciate that. Thank you, Scott. It's good to see your name here. Prayers are always with you and Jill. Thanks for being here, Scott. I appreciate it. I know you've got a lot going on. Lori said, uh, saw your article on Long Island this morning. Good content. Long Island. Not Long Island. Uh, LinkedIn. Oh, you saw it. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. And, 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 and Lori, you know what I did? What I did was I, when I write for Travel Research Online, I don't use travel or agent. I don't. I write it generic. But you guys don't know that. I don't think. I write it from a small business perspective. Why do I do that, friends? Why? So that when I post it on LinkedIn, it's talking to everybody. It's talking to other entrepreneurs, other solopreneurs, other business people. And and, and because some people, if it said travel in it, and, and let's say they're an accountant, they're, they're going to say, oh, this isn't for me. But at the end of the day, this information is for them too. So everything I do has a multi-purpose. It has legs on it, right? I can use it for multiple uh, occasions. So when I write one article, I can use it in several places. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. Uh, Loretta's in the house. I have no speaker, and since you are muted, I can't hear either. Please, can you unmute me? Oh, you want me to unmute you, Loretta? So you, so Loretta, let me ask you, do you want us to hear your voice? Would you like to speak? And if that's a yes, I am happy to unmute your uh, microphone. That's if you want to talk. But I, I'm not muted. I think you are all hearing me, right? Everybody can hear me. Um, so you should hear me, but I don't think you want me to turn your mic on. Let's see what she says. I don't know. I think for some reason you can't hear me, but everybody else can. That's interesting. Linda says, we'll be able to download those to use as an example. Linda, I, uh, you know what, Linda? 
Sure. All you got to do is ask. You have asked, and I will upload some of these fill in the blanks into boot camp for you. And you can see what I do because sometimes, like I said, you know, if you go, if you go up one, if you, you know, if you look at this one here, uh, there's, there's, there's very little information. It's truly a chart or a diagram while this one over here, uh, what well, this one over here is a literal fill in the blank to complete a sentence. So there's many ways to make it engaging. So Linda, I will do that. My pleasure. Loretta said either, will I be able to hear the recorded webinar? Yes, absolutely. You will absolutely be able to hear the recorded webinar. These are always recorded. Uh, they're on YouTube and I post them in Facebook now, so they are easily accessible to you all. Super easy. So Loretta, it sounds like you want me to put your mic on so we could hear you. Um, okay, Loretta, do me one more thing. Just say yes, please put my mic on and I will do it in a moment because I'd love it when people are bold enough to do that. And then we're gonna dive into questions. Hello, Kyle, Kyle said yes, so that's good news. Thank you, glad you're here. Uh, let's see, Nancy said, you don't have to read this out. Um, can't, can't really see me, it's creating a silhouette. Ah, okay, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. If I turn a little bit, is that better? I was afraid it'd be too silhouetted. So how's that, is that better? I was a little afraid of that. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Loretta said she's on the phone now. So uh, better, better, better. Okay, so that's good. That's better. All right, here we go. So let me just get out of these slides. Give me just a second here and get rid of that. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. So it's just me. So right now you should just see me and no screen. And we're going to dive into some of the questions that were sent in in advance. And please, friends, if you have stuff to share, do it now. So the first set of questions that came up, come in were from you, LaDonna. So listen up, everybody, because one of the key things is I'm going to give you my best answer, but I want you to contribute as well. OK, please. It's important. Uh, question number one. She has four questions. Here we go. Number one. What are the best types? What are the best types of organizations to approach for large cruise groups? What are the best types of organizations for large cruise groups. So LaDonna, I, you know, I'm going to answer this a couple of ways. Number one, um, I, I, I'm impressed and I, I encourage you to think big for a large cruise group. And the, the, the challenge is that, you know, the bigger the group, uh, the, the, the more challenging it may be to go find that because that's what everyone else is looking for. It's the most competitive arena. Everyone's big and big is not necessarily better when it comes to groups because if you're not, if you don't do it efficiently, if there's not enough of a markup, uh, if you don't have the right help and using the right tools, it can overwhelm an agency. So I want to make sure, number one, LaDonna, that you're ready to handle it. You're using everything in boot camp, the group agreement letter, all the efficiency tools, the, the suggestions that I make to you. You're prepared to escort or have an escort there because it's large. But be careful what you wish for, because sometimes you get it and it could be overwhelmed. And I say that lovingly. I have no doubt you can handle it. But I want you to know thinking big doesn't necessarily mean a big head count. Thinking big could be a big a profit margin with fewer people. But you can certainly have both. So to answer your question head on, in this case, uh, it would definitely, my guess is, would have to be a specific, a specific organization, a specific association. And this may be a case, LaDonna, where this is a group, they travel every year or maybe every five years. They do a big trip uh, and they it, it's their 20th anniversary of being an organization or maybe they have an awards night. See, one of the key things is so many associations, organizations, clubs that are not necessarily local, that are nationwide clubs, they don't meet altogether or they do. They have an annual conference and they always do the annual conference at a hotel here in Boston, New York or wherever. So the magic there is if you do some research, if you somehow through your list or through doing hardcore research, find that there's an, an organization, an association, and they have a, an annual holiday party or they have an annual awards ceremony 
if they do something annually or once every two years, whatever, but it's a, a regular event and they're not doing it any places other than a hotel, that's a great opportunity to say, hey, next year, let's make it very special. Let's do it on a ship. Let's do it at a resort. And I, I, that, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. That's what I would do, LaDonna, if I was specifically looking big. And, I, and, and, and I'll tell you for a number of reasons, that if you just, if you just wanna do your own wine tasting river cruise, let's say, that's the theme. I'm just using that as an example. Now listen to me, why, why I gave you my recommendation. And you just went and you told family and friends and all your lists or whatever that you want to do this. Um, I I think it's going to be highly unlikely. It's going to be really big, unless you are a celebrity. I'm not, unless you are that I'm not aware of. Uh, you, you, you know, I think your best bet is to have an organization that already has a go-to list of people that already is used to having regular events or they've never done it but they want to they need to they have people all over the place and they want to do something special for the next one whether it's in two years or next year or three years because it may be three years out versus uh you trying to lead it and to sell as many as possible because then it's not much of an affinity uh or if you do have a group leader what if they don't have a big enough following so i think you answered your own question has to be an organization, an association, a club, okay, that is already doing these kind of events that will increase the opportunity for you to have success because these people are already used to getting together. Uh, that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. And you guys and gals, tell me if, if uh, you think uh, there's there's uh, uh, Sheila, I got your question. I appreciate that. If anybody has any to add on that, question number two: What was your final cabin count for your chartered river cruise? Uh, a group on AMA. Yes, we were on the AMA Christina, April 2017. It was a par partial ship charter, partial ship, uh, because then you, you can take a few, much fewer staterooms than, of course, the whole ship. So we had 23 people. We had 23 people. Okay, and for for a river cruise boat, that's that's not so bad. So 23 people. We did have one single. Okay, my mom uh, was in a single, and that was the third, 23. And there you go. And we were very happy. It was the right people came, a real great mix of people. There were some friends of friends who came who I had not met before, you know, friends of some family that I, they were their friends, not family. So I didn't know them. And it worked out beautifully. Number three, had you ha have you had any success with paid advertising on social media? So, friends, do you have any input here? Do you have any success or lack of success with paid advertising on social media? So for me personally, LaDonna, I can tell you that I do Facebook boost post, okay? Some of you may have seen it. For instance, if you are, uh, uh, well, it wouldn't have mattered because I post it from my Stuart Cohen Travel Agent Training Facebook group. Now, that is a business page. Now, I believe you can only pay or boost a post and Facebook, it's if it's a business group, and this is a group, a business group, versus you, you can't boast, boost a post on your personal Facebook group, right? And so I'll pay, and you know, you have to, there's definitely a science to it. The best person to ask about this is Catherine. You all know Catherine Heeg. She's the best at that, you know, to help explain how you can segment and target. And of course, who do I target? I target travel agent owners, travel agencies, okay? And that's how I just promoted more, that my mastermind that I'm doing with Mike Marshev. So uh, does it work for me? You know what? I'll, I'll drop 20 bucks, 50 bucks. I really don't spend a lot, so I may not be your best example, LaDonna, but uh, I feel it gets the word out. I Because it shows you how many click-throughs, how many full views, how much engagement you get. And for me, it works. Of course, a lot has to do with what you're promoting, what you're advertising to. So uh, it's one of those things that I can tell you must work because so many businesses and people use it. It's about how you do it. And you can do an A group and a B group. In other words, you can run two, which is a great idea. Let's see, okay, does this message work? 
or does this message work? Which one is getting the most click-throughs, the most views, the most interest? And then once you see what works, that campaign ends and you put all your money in the one that worked better. So I don't know if any of you have any success with paying in other social media channels. Please let us know because I want to share that. We can post that in boot camp. But, and, and I will ask that question uh, publicly. And number four, have you or someone in the group had any success with paid advertising on Yelp? Y-E-L-P. Me? Never. I've, I've never tried it, so I have not had success or failure. Question for you. Have you had any success or failure using Yelp for paid advertising? Please let us know. Let me know. Okay, type in there or let's share in boot camp. I'm going to not just let the ball drop here. I'm going to ask uh, everyone else in boot camp and also on the group sales success summit page. Uh, I'm going to ask them if they have input. It's a great topic of conversation. So good stuff, LaDonna. I, I hope I hope that helped you. Let me go to uh, Sheila's question here, and then we're going to go to uh, um, who comes in. Uh, then Nancy and then Karen. So here's the next question. Would love to hear how others handle an add-on, an add-on course. Uh, so it's an educational course of, of an add-on fee for an educational aspect that goes to the group leader if the cruise line doesn't uh, take over charge. Okay, so how do you handle an add-on? So let's say part of the group, there's a, a course that somebody pays extra money for. So it's an educational thing. But if that particular cruise line doesn't take an overcharge, how do you collect that money? So, you know, the first question I want to ask you, uh, or that you, we need to know, Sheila, is, uh, is, uh, is this an optional thing that people can buy, or is it automatically is going to be included? Because if it's, let me answer now, if it's packaged in, if everyone gets it, and you don't want that number, let's say it's $50, to be revealed, you want it to be packaged in. Okay, and the supplier you've chosen does not take an overcharge. You don't want somebody knowing it's 50 bucks. Then my suggestion, Sheila, is that uh, when it comes to your two-step payment process, your deposit and your final, okay, that you take the deposit by check. Take a deposit by check. And I know this sounds kind of bold, but sometimes we need to be bold in order to achieve uh, what's what's necessary here. And so, in other words, if the deposit that you really need for the supplier is $200, and you know you need to add $50 in for the course, well, then you can, for the deposit, you can make it $250. And you collect that, and of course, you've take 200 of that, that goes to the supplier so you can make the booking, make the reservation, and then the balance can go directly, uh, be charged, you know, the supplier can be a direct charge or, you know, right into their system. So, you, so you're not taking the money, goes direct to supplier. Now, if, of course, uh, if the, the course is optional, if they're going to pay optional, then it, it makes it easier because then you will have to reveal how much that extra course is. And if you're not set up on PayPal or you don't want to take the 3% hit, uh, if you're not set up to collect through a merchant account, okay, through Square or something, then do the same thing by check. If you want this course, you need to pay it this way. That's it. You just got to go for it. You got to do it. And, you know, one of the big issues there is, well, what if people don't use checks? Well, there's there's a Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, that's bank to bank. It's free. There's a Venmo. It's free. There's all these new fangled electronic payment ways of transferring payments. Uh, or maybe you can set up a PayPal account or, uh, and, and I know this is travel related, so I don't want to get, you know, get put in jail here, get in hot water because PayPal does not favor uh, collecting uh, for a travel product, as you know, but if it's for an online course, if it's something different, uh, then and then maybe that'll be kosher. Sheila, tell me if that if that helped you. So I'd like to know if that helped you at all. Uh, Sheila said packaged in. There we go. Uh, Julia said, here we go. I've seen course fees made directly to the person organizing the travel, the price for the cruise, 
and course fee are separate. There you go, it's another option. Even though Sheila did just reveal, Julia, that it's going to be packaged in. So if, if that's the case, uh, then that means that number is not revealed. Um, you may not be able to have the, the fee go directly uh, to that person. Now, something else I want to offer to you, and this may be a little risky. What if that educator, what if that teacher is already in the business of selling stuff? They already sell their courses. They already sell their, their products. Now, here's the other option, Julia, uh, Ashila. Okay. If, if they already have a, a transactional system worked out, then why not have, well, now bear with me, why not have them collect the deposit? Why not have them collect the $250? They keep the 50 and they give you the two. I know what you're thinking. I can see you. You're like, oh, that's a little risky. They're getting the cash. Well, that's where a contract, not an agreement, a contract comes into place. There has to be a, not only a tremendous level of trust, but a written agreement that they're going to collect it. And then, and that uh, every seven days or whatever, they're going to transfer the uh, the other funds to you, right? So if you have a good relationship and a contract, then they'll get it. They'll have no issue with that, and you'll have the money you need. Um, so that's just another idea. So I hope that helps, Eddie. Uh, Loretta says, "Would you tell? Uh, would you tell a non-refundable fifty? Well, it, so it sounds to me like." Uh, you know, Loretta's asking, well, well, you know, what if that 50, they want the money back or whatever. I I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, non-refundable 50. So here's the deal. I just, I had a conversation with another one of our boot campers about, you know, collecting a deposit and making it refundable. Uh, sometimes you need to do it. Sometimes you can't do it. Uh, but sometimes at the early stage, just to get cash flow, to get money in, to get people committed and engaged, you ask for a couple of bucks that you make refundable. So it's like, okay, if I don't like it, I'm out. But you're going to end up with twice as many people in if they know that by putting up a couple of bucks now, which is fully refundable, uh, they, it gets them the VIP access, right? That's that's how you leverage that VIP access if you put up a couple of bucks now. So, yeah, it sounds like this course thing, I think that's pretty, that, that's pretty cool. If they're going to do... If they're coming on this trip and that and that you know of the two hundred fifty dollar deposit, fifty is non-refundable. Uh, you can do it. I think that would decrease the chance of them changing their mind and canceling, especially if the two hundred is refundable, knowing that they didn't want to lose the fifty, so they're going to stick with it. Just an just an idea. Sheila said yes, thanks. Sheila said, can we split payment two hundred to the supply, fifty to the group leader's transaction amount? Uh, you, you, you can, but then it gets revealed. So, Sheila, it really comes down to how much you do or don't want that 50, that portion, to be revealed. Uh, I'm all for the package. I'm hoping it can be packaged in. If there's no downside to revealing the 50, then you can do it that way. One final note here. You want to make it as uncomplicated as possible, friends, for the buyer. Because if the buyer has to start paying this one, this one, and this one, and they see multiple hits on their credit card statement saying, wow, what's going on? That that just looks bad. It feels bad. It's stressful for them. It's stressful for you, too, because payments have been made in, in one, you know, two or more different places. I try to avoid that. Uh, it's best so it goes to one place, all the payments. But if you have to do two, no more than two. Danny said, because Danny does the photography groups, with my photography groups, I make the cruise deposit and the photographer. I I make the cruise deposit and the photographer takes payment for his workshop. Works very nicely. So Danny already has this worked out. And Danny's in boot camp. So, you know, let's have that conversation in, in boot camp so that, Danny, you could share how that works, how you do it. So clearly the photographer takes their piece and the rest is it goes towards the uh, the package, the uh, the cruise that you've created. You're most welcome, Sheila. All right, so I'm going to come here to the next question, but I want to make sure uh, uh, now's the time for you all to post your next question as well. So let me just move this here. Um, okay, so here, listen to this. This is this is a great one. And Nancy, I've got your question too. Um, 
So uh, this is under the heading of group leader compensation. In the early stages of conversation and qualifying a potential group leader, inevitably the conversation of compensation for them comes up. And, and she puts in parentheses, in the old days when we stupidly offered them the free cruise, right? Because in boot camp, we don't do that anymore. We never do it unless they say, that's what I want. And then you got to deal with that. We're not going to talk about that. So the question is, should we introduce it? Should we? Should you introduce the concept of compensation to the group leader? And when? She said, can we simply ask, what are you looking for? It's easy. And then she goes on to say, what about all the possibilities of earning compensation? Selling their books. Uh, adding a fee to every attendee, rewarding them for every attendee they bring to the group and others. So her question is, how should I show them this could be very profitable for them? So it's a great question, Karen. And listen up, everybody. The, the single most important takeaway I want you to have from this, this whole uh, issue, well, let's just say opportunity, because this is important. It's not a challenge. It's an opportunity. Is to make it occur organically. Ra to start with, of course, rather than you saying, um, oh, I'll give you this, I can give you this, and you're gonna get this, and maybe they want it, maybe they don't, but then it's sort of a gimme. You never want it to be a gimme. You know what a gimme is. They earn it for doing nothing. Everything they're gonna get, everything they're gonna receive is gonna be earned, is earned. You're not in the, free, in the business of giving away freebies. And what if it doesn't come up organically? What if they don't say, I want this, I'm hoping to get this, I'd love to have this, or I demand this? What if they don't do that? And this goes to really to the heart of Karen's question. So I think it's totally fair, Karen, and everybody, to come right out and, and as you're taking notes and you're smiling, it's great, it's exciting, you're saying, What's in it for you? Just ask the question, friends. What's in it for you? And the way they answer, the substance of the answer is going to dictate wh where you go. Think of the things they could say. They might say, I just, I just, the labor of love for me. I just want to make this a big success because I care about these people. I love these people. We do it every year. It's our first time. So really, um, I, I, I don't I don't need anything. It's very kind. Maybe, maybe you can buy me a drink when we're on board. Deal. Now, would that be nice? What if they don't say that? What if what if what if it's an organization association and and it's and their main goal is not necessarily for it to be a successful group, but that's what you really 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 want, friends. Their main goal has to be a successful group because the, if their only goal is to make money, if their only goal is to go free and they don't care about anything else, then deal is off. Look, look what I'm doing here. It's over. The number one goal is to have for them to have a successful group as you both define that. So secondarily, if they say, well, it would be nice if my accommodations were paid for. Okay. And then, of course, you're going to ease them into that. And you say, great, we can absolutely make that happen because based on how many staterooms or rooms we sell, uh, we, we can we can do all we can to achieve that. And how about if I lay out sort of a, a real simple sheet of to show you if we have 10, if we have 12, if we have 20, where where you'll get the accommodations? Because remember, there's port taxes and gratuities. And uh, would you want it all covered? Yes, of course. OK, we'll set up something that's reasonable but achievable. Listen to me, reasonable and achievable so that you get what you want. Remember, it's always an incentive, a tiered, T-I-E-R-E-D, tiered incentive. And what if they don't want the, the accommodations because maybe we've talked about this, friends. Maybe they're not allowed to take any free because it's an associated organization, not for profit, and they can't take freebies. That's very possible. That's why one of the biggest terrible dangers agents I have when they just right away just say, you get a free cap, because they say, great, I can't have it, so I'm just going to give it to such and such, because they deserve it for you. They've had a tough uh, financial year. Uh, no, no, you just lost all your leverage, right? But we already know that. So what's in it for me? 
What's in it for you? What do you want? Maybe it's maybe it's a massage. Maybe it's a spa treatment. You know, maybe it's an excursion. Uh, maybe they want an upgrade, which of course will cost you less. Okay, but everything is earned. And and the other thing that it could be is cash. What if they? And I'm going to get to your other points, Karen. Then then we're going to move to Nancy's question and, and check the boards again. What if they want to earn cash? What if this is you know business? They absolutely want to see a successful group, but they also want to make some cash. It, it, like with with Danny. He, he, this photographer wants to make money. I get it, right? Uh, uh, with um, I was going to see if Ladonna had a specific question, but but let's say it's somebody who's a pie piper, they're an author, they're a, a, a chef, they're some kind of influencer, a celebrity. People want to meet them. They're going to teach. They're going to do yoga. You're going to go birding. So they want to be compensated. And one of the key things is that if you have friends, if you have somebody who is the, if you're not the affinity and the association isn't, but it's a person, the teacher, the lecturer that people are coming to see, um, don't, don't, you know, th th they may assume they're going to go free, but it should never be that way. It should still be earned. So remember, th there's two separate things. It's one thing to get accommodations. It's another to make some cash. And if they want to earn cash too, then you can layer that in per head. I, I say you layer it in per head, but it can't be from from oh, maybe it has to be from guest one. If they're attending a, a course, it's fifty dollar per head, period. Okay. If that's the case, that's fine. But friends, you not you need to be good at your Excel spreadsheet to make sure you only give back what you can afford to give back. And you don't want to give any gimmicks. So you can do X amount of dollars a head. And uh, one note that just popped into my head, friends, you don't want to be paying out early. I, I want you, I want you, I want you to see if you can not do your payout, your cash payout, okay, until departure time. Why? Because what if it's really close? And what if there's a close in cancellation? What if you miss earning the TC, which, of course, is none of their business? They don't know how that works. What if you miss it? What if there's a cancellation? If you've already given out the cash you paid, and now what are you going to go back and get the $300 back, the $1,000 back? Fat chance of that, right? So you want to hold on to it and say, I will pay this out. Now, unless you see they've far exceeded, and I'm going to have one more note for you, but if they've far exceeded the goal, and you feel comfortable that you can pay it out, and even with a cancellation or two, it's not going to affect anything, then you can do it. And, and, and you can paper that up, so don't make this rule as you go. It's part of the group agreement letter. How the incentive works and when are you gonna pay it out? So if we hit 50, then the pad will happen. But if, but, but if we're anywhere, if we're under 50 staterooms, I'm just making this up, then the payout will come at time of departure. I will hand you a check. I will hand you a check on the ship because we have to watch to see, you know, in case it's last minute compensation. So you're not paying out on something that's not earned. And, you know, you bring up all the points here, final point about how else they can earn money. You need to be thinking like an entrepreneur too. Or do they have books? Do they have saleable items that they can also make money from? Just one word of caution, friends. Have you ever had that experience? Tell me that if you have a band come on board and they want to sell their t-shirts, they A, have to get permission first, and B, normally have to give a cut to the cruise line. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yep, the cruise lines will have their hand in that. You're going to sell mugs and pens and all kinds of tchotchkes and stuff. Some don't have the rule, but most do. And you got to be careful. Maybe you can get it in under the radar, under the wire. So there are transactions that happen in the room. But if you have a table set up of merchandise, somebody comes up and approaches you from the ship saying, what are you selling here? You're, you're hurting. You're hurting my business. You're selling suntan lotion with their logo on it. But I sell suntan lotion. You got to give me a piece of that. Right. If you had that experience, I have. I have. And remember, I work for cruise lines, too. So I've seen it happen more than once. OK. Uh, uh, and, and yes, uh, to sort of close out that question, Karen, that goes to the whole value of their, their compensation. How are old and you're very creative here. I love it. Uh, what are the ways they can earn that you're comfortable sharing? And so so that maybe that makes them work even harder to achieve the goals and they can get the things they want, especially if it's all about cash.
Okay, we're going to move now to Nancy's question, and I, I want to know if uh, if there's anything new, anything you want to add uh, here. But I uh, just to let you know, because we're oh my goodness, it's we're 45 minutes in, but we do have the next power hour scheduled. Um, I think it's in two, maybe three weeks. I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. Ah, see, I'm not in my normal habitat, so I don't have all my notes in front of me. So make sure you sign up for that. And uh, I would love to get your, especially my boot campers, your feedback, please, on the group sales success summit. Because what, what I want to do is, Nancy, your question is coming up next. Nancy, uh, everybody, uh, I think day one, I'm going to do all coaches, all professional coaches, because the way I get the coaches to do this naturally, to, to, to share their expertise and stuff, is because they want access to you. You may see Teddy. You may see Catherine. You may see Dan Chappelle. You may see somebody, Mike Marsh, somebody you love and you want more. You want to follow them. You want to get on their list. You want to buy their product or at least become a follower. Uh, so I want to bring in more coaches, new coaches as well. But if I do that day one, then that increases the chance, let's say if it's a five-day summit, that somebody's going to meet them rather than put them on day five or day eight. So that's the first thing. And then after that, it's probably going to be vendors, suppliers, brands who I feel have a worthy teaching message that adds significant value to your group business plans. But I, I need your feedback, please. And if you go back in and look at GSS1 and GSS2, GSSS2, you'll see that if you haven't looked lately, I've reformatted it. So there's a little bit of a quick reference guide to who's speaking on what day so you can find them faster, right? Because the next one I'm going to produce, you know, you get smarter every time you do something. And I want to make it easier for you to access the information you want from the people you want to hear from. Uh, and I, I want to make sure that uh, GSSS3 just knocks it out of the park again. It's even better than one, better than two. So your feedback is invaluable, is important for me. Okay, so here's Nancy's question. And, and I'm going to need your input for this because I am not the, uh, I'm not the app guy. You know, I'm not the, oh, Cohen's got an app for that guy. I use what I use and I still use a paper calendar paper, you know, a, a book. I write stuff in because I just don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with electronic and, and stuff like that. Uh, her question is this, Nancy from Adventure Marketplace. How do I organize my industry contacts? I don't have a Rolodex, nor would I know where to find one. How do I organize my industry contacts? So back in the day, of course, it would be the business cards and the Rolodex, of course, and that doesn't really exist anymore. And while I save business cards, um, I don't rely on them because there's just too many. It's hard to sort through and find them. I don't put them in a three ring binder with a plastic slip cover, you know, put them in. I put them in my computer and, and, and Nancy, here's what I do. And I want to hear from all of you what you do to organize industry contacts. Okay, so I have a Mac. I use their contact uh, app, the application that you get with the program. And I actually use keywords or tags. I, I use tags. So if I'm putting somebody into my, if I met somebody and uh, they're not in travel, uh, they're a coach because uh, I work with an organization in Memphis called the Memphis Coaches Network. So when I add somebody to my contact list, I'll put a tag in there, I'll just write uh, MCN or Memphis Coaches Network so that I can do a search, a global search of everybody in my contact list, type in in the search bar MCN and everybody who has MCN, of course, comes up. So it's, it's no different from what we do on the web now or if we search for documents on the computer, that's how I track it. So for instance, if you had Caribbean tour operators or something, you, you, you can have your own searching system and just use the tool you already have, assuming it allows you to search for contacts. Put a tag in there. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, cru cruise line excursions and you have four companies and you just don't remember all three, well, just put in a code. And, and you could keep track of the codes, you know, it could be CLE, cruise line excursions, so you know 
just type in CLA. Does that make sense? I know maybe I'm oversimplifying it, uh, but I love oversimplifying it in my life. And that's what I do. Now, I am sure there are CRM uh, con, con, uh, not relationship management programs, but just uh, Rolodex type applications that you can buy or use. Maybe Google offers that too. I'm not really sure, but that's my suggestion. But let me stop talking, see if we get any comments here. Scott says, uh, I put my contacts directly into CRM and save them and make notes on phone, what we spoke about on the appointments. So Scott actually uses a CRM program. Uh, and saves them and then makes notes on iPhone. And then my guess is, Scott, my guess is the uh, you can import whatever you type into your phone is maybe done by the cloud or, or done by USB to upload so that when you look up that contact in your CRM again, you see all the notes. Am I calling that right? Am I making sense there? Does anybody else have anything they want to share about their contacts and how they keep it? Come on, everybody. If you haven't participated yet, look at me. Type in. I want to see, if I can't see your beautiful face or hear your beautiful voice, I want to see the words, the beautiful words that you type. Sherry says, thank you, Sherry. Uh, in my contacts, I have one folder labeled suppliers. Then I use subheads to break them down according to what I what they sell. So there you go. So that's it's almost like some kind of a library system. I'll read it again. In my contacts, I have one folder labeled suppliers, so they're all in there. So you have folders uh, based on the category of contact they are, and then use subheads to break them down according to what they sell. I like it. So again, a simple solution. I think a lot depends on what a CRM, what contact program that you're using. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. Trinita says uh, there are a few good apps that scan and organize. So, Trinita, I assume you mean they scan a business card. Is that right? So, I've tried the business card scanners, and maybe I haven't gotten the good ones, but man, it don't work for me, especially if someone's got a really complicated, complex, way too overcrowded, just nasty, confusing business card. And, you know, ultimately, all I want is their name, their email address, or their phone number, or their website. And I need a, I need a, a damn microscope, a microscope to find it when Remember, friends, the purpose of a business card is just to give a contact information. Where Here's where to find me. Here's where to reach me. Because most business cards get chucked because there are no Rolodexes anymore. So why, why, why do we why do we try to make the business card such a selling billboard and, and cram so much in there? Maybe our, a beautiful picture of our face. We've talked about this in the past. Put your put your mug, put a mug shot of you on that business card. I love that. I love it. But just. No fancy logos. Who cares? You're not Nike. I'm not Nike. Just, just put, here's how to reach me. Here's my name. Here's my website. And, you know, listen, I'm 56 years old. I need readers. So don't don't force me to put my readers on and get a microscope. Make it easy. Simple. Oh, here's Stuart's photo. Here's his URL. Here's his email address. Uh, Sherry said, uh, so categories, uh, Sherry, about her filing system. Uh, so under, so, you know, she has a supplier folder, but she'll have then under cruises and then destinations. So you could really do a nice breakdown. So it's organized beautifully. Man, man, when we organize, right, Nancy, when we organize, uh, and I'm just the worst at organizing by nature, by because how my brain is wired. Uh, but the better I do, I become more efficient. You know, it just takes time when we receive the new name. When we receive the new supplier, when we have to add it to our, our database, that we take the time to add it right. Because it frustrate, frustrates the daylights out of me when I'm like, oh, man, three months ago I met this guy. Or I met this gal. And, wow, where did I put it? Who is this person? What's their name? And I type into the search bar and I'm realizing I got lazy. I got lazy. I didn't enter it in at all. Or I entered it in without the, the the keyword searches. And what Sherry does, I'm sure, is as soon as she gets a new contact, she puts it in the right folder and in the right subheadings. Nancy said, I don't have a CRM. I use MailChimp for my clients and tag their interests and file my industry emails into folders on Gmail. Yeah, so MailChimp is not going to be the solution here because that's your email distribution um, program. 
right? Email distribution. And uh, emails is another because you can put them into folders on Gmail. But you want a, a the, the, I would not call this a CRM. I would just call it a, a your contact, a contact booklet, you know, your, your, your phone book, if you will, whatever you want to call it, it, it based on what, what you need it most for. Uh, so maybe I'm not getting exactly what you want to do. It sounds like to me, it's just context. It's just an address book, you know, a real simple to use address book that you can self create as Sherry has done, as I have done pretty much using an existing tool or use an additional tool, which is what Trinita, Trinita is uh, uh, is offering. Uh, Nancy said, thanks, we'll organize suppliers into a folder by destination and activity. Beautiful. And any other keywords? I really think the keywords are important, Nancy and Sherry, so that you're like, hmm, what could I use for this? You type in that keyword, it does a search, and you'll be surprised. You met somebody two years ago at a networking event at the New York Times travel show that I know Nancy went to, and she said it was terrific. It was great. Nancy said, I have scanned cards app. Doesn't work great. There you go. Right. Just does it. Loretta said, I use Excel, which can sort and have suppliers. Oh, right. Thank you, Loretta, for reminding me. I was going to suggest that to you, Nancy. Now, you know, you got to be somewhat comfortable with Excel. I hope you are. Uh, it's a bear to learn from the get go. But the more you use it, the better you get. But you can you can use Excel for so much for your billing statements. You can use Excel for uh, because you can do a mail merge with Word documents. You can print up invoices and confirmations. I do it all the time. It's amazing the power of Excel, especially when you can join it with uh, with uh, Microsoft Word. You know the mail merge concept. It's tremendous. But you can easily do a contact book in Excel and do searches and create columns. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Loretta, for reminding me. Loretta said, and put the contact information. As Trinita said, true, not all are great, but a couple are. So we're talking about those, those business cards, card scanners. Ruth says, I use clientees for all customer contacts. Clientees. So I'm not familiar with that. Of course, I've heard of clientees. Uh, that's um, my friend. Oh, my goodness. My friend, my friend, my friend. I can't remember her name. Darla, 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 she's wonderful. Client is for all customer contacts and all suppliers and their contact info. Um, uh, photography business cards for, for, uh, later, then delete. So she she takes a picture of the business cards and then she uh, uh, email or text business cards. So you can email or text them between each other. You can share the contact. So so client these does that. That's awesome. Gina says that's the that is the most to file it. You go right. You got to file it in 28, 48 hours because if you don't, you're gonna forget it. Sherry said, and we're winding down, friends. We got two minutes left, so stick with me. Class not dismissed till we get through uh, the rest here. Sherry said, laugh out loud. Uh, sometimes I have to set aside an hour just to organize my supplier contacts. I hear you, but wouldn't it be great? And unfortunately, I'm so bad at this. Uh, because, you know, I say, okay, I'll get to it. I make a pile, and then there's a bigger pile, and a bigger pile. Wouldn't it be great is when we get a new contact, we put it in right away, put it in the right way, set it, and right. Yeah, forget it. Nancy said Darla. So Darla, if we're talking clienties, I think Darla and her sister, they are the creators. Darla is sort of the out front uh, salesperson, the marketeer, and her sister does all the back end creation of it, if I'm not mistaken. That's my friend Darla, who I've known for many, many years. Does that make sense? All right, friends, listen, was this helpful to you? Before you go, let me know. Did this work for you? Uh, did you get something out of today's session? I saw sure Hope Show. So I uh, I can't even speak because I've got, uh, I've got Jane Gabrielle on the brain, my granddaughter. I'm going to go see her now. But this was important for me to connect with you and to tell you that I'm here for you and tell you that I'm grateful for you. And we've got 30 seconds left to see if, if you have any parting comments, any any words of wisdom you want to share here. And I'm so excited, Trinita and and uh, uh, Danny, uh, and uh, I think there's some others from boot camp too coming to uh, the mastermind in, in late March with me and Mike. Very very excited. And that's a group, friends. That we're, I'm doing what I'm preaching to you to do. It's a group. It's a retreat. And and me and Mike, we're we're leading it, right? So we're doing what we talk about y'all doing. And you can't be done. Sherry said, proud grandpapa, you got it. You are very welcome, Sherry. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. Truly, I love this. And Nancy said, um, yes, need an assistant. Right? And maybe that's a good investment to get a virtual assistant, to do just that. 
to know where your shortfall is, pay someone to do it because I do that, probably not enough. That's my, that's the way I, I, I save the day. I just pay someone to get it done. Uh, thank you for your congratulations, Nancy. Friends, all right, time is up now. So class dismissed. I'll see you next power out, but I'll see you in boot camp before then in the Facebook group. For